partly throughout the day, tomorrow with a couple of showers, high 78 to 83. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Kevin Snyder. All right, thank you, Kevin. Five minutes after 11 o'clock, the rest of the country is freezing. We are not. <laughs> Yeah. We, we had our we had a little cold snap there for a little while, and then it's back to normal, right? That's right. From what they say. <laughs> uh, let's see. Robin, I, re- I read our next topic this yes. morning as I was reviewing what we were going to speak about today, and I love the fact that we're going to speak about things that are important for, um, for parents. Mm-hmm. There is a new survey we're going to talk about, the results of a new survey of 2,500 moms and dads, and I'm glad they included dads in on this one. Sometimes, you know, as dads are left out a little bit. That's right. And Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I got talking points. Thank you for that. Uh, Stephanie Azron is our guest, and she is known as the Mommy Maven. Uh, she's a writer. She managed marketing projects for Disney, Nickelodeon, Heinz. That's the catch of people, right? Yep. Uh, Time, Hasbro, Gund, the Bronx Zoo. <laughs> That's cool. One of my favorite places when I was a kid. Um, and then the, the then the topic came up this morning. And I was like, oh, is this a racial thing? Are dads the new black? <laughs> and then you explained to me, no, no, it's a fashion reference. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> something I, I don't know that I understand. Uh, Stephanie Azarone. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Where are you right now? I am in very cold New York City, unlike where you folks are. <laughs> well, can we rub it in just a little bit? No. <laughs> I miss New York a lot, actually. So, uh, do well, you really? Yeah, I do. Have you ever lived anywhere but there? No, born and bred. <laughs> New York girl. <laughs> so, yeah, see? I do miss it. Every once in a while, I, I go to the Times Square camp just so that I can... Ah, oh, there mm-hmm. it is. <laughs> there's my place right there. And there's a dad out there now with his little girl on his shoulder. So there you go. We see a lot of dads so here the, with their kids. Are dads the new black? Robin told me that that's a reference to fashion in some way. It is, and thank you, Robin, for explaining that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is more of a girl thing than a guy thing. Okay. So I'm glad we got that all cleared out. So what does that? What so, does that, What does that mean? Well, it's basically, you know, it, black is always the the fashion, and uh, over time, navy has been the new black, and on TV, orange is the new black. Um, so basically, we wanted to know whether dads were the fashionable new go-to for marketing, or if they were really the important new way to, to turn. Now, explain what we- you mean in, in commercials and things like that. Well, basically, in overall marketing, we because we specialize in marketing to moms, um, between our monitoring moms' conversations and our in-house research, we were a little surprised when we started seeing a number of articles about how dad was playing a much larger role in household purchasing decisions. And some of the claims seemed a little extreme to us, and it was important for us to find out what was reality and what was simply perception so that we could advise the clients that we work with on how to market their various products and whether they should be going to moms or whether they should be going to dads. Now, can I, can I ask a question? Why wouldn't it be to parents? Why, would, why do we even separate the genders, the sexes, whatever? Good question. It, it is a good question, uh, and the answer is that, in reality, mom has always been the major decision maker when it comes to buying for the home. In fact, she is the major decision maker still in about 80% of the families. What has changed is that moms are responsible for those decisions about two-thirds of the time. That's notable because it contrasts with the long-held belief that moms are responsible for about 80% of household uh, decisions. So, in other words, dads are getting somewhat more involved, but our research shows that still mom's the top decision maker. Okay, so if you were going to sell me the idea of going to the Bronx Zoo, my, uh, using, mm-hmm. uh, you, would, you would say something different to me than you would to Robin? It's not so much the messaging as the channels for reaching the right target. So, for example, it's still more important to focus on reaching mom blogs, for example, or parenting magazines, as opposed to going to a men's magazine to to share that particular message. We need to go where the moms oh, okay. are more so s- than where the dads are. I can see that visual already. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I think I know what the ad looks like. <laughs> Maybe I should have used a different example. Hey, Dad, <laughs> let's go. Why don't you take your kids to the Bronx Zoo? <laughs> Look what you might see there. <laughs> well, I think dads are very instrumental, though, in like choosing toys for their children and uh, sometimes even even clothing because now you see 
uh, you know, so many women wanting to leave the relationship. They have the children and then they get bored with whatever. And then the women leave and now the dad has the children full time. And the dad has to be the one that goes out to buy their, their uh, birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, the school supplies, things of that nature. Well, it's true, and Dad's the only one around, but we found somewhat to our disappointment, because as moms ourselves, we wanted to see more Dad involvement, that when it is a couple, that Dads really have minimal involvement, especially when it's buying for the kids. One of the questions we asked was, uh, what categories are Dads either entirely responsible for or primarily responsible for? And when it came to kids' toys or kids' clothes, they were entirely responsible only about 1% of the time, which was a real, as I said, surprise to us. When it came to sharing responsibilities for those particular areas, there was an improvement. They were they shared it about 20% of the time, but um, if it, it, if it were up to the guys entirely, I think the kids would go without a lot of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of toys. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Well, I can I can actually relate to this. Now, I'm a dad, but my child is 27 years old. So, but I remember those days, and so that would have been what in the early 90s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, for example, getting like Woman's Day magazine. Not that I, but it'd be like laying there. It'd be at a doctor's office or you know at some place. Mm -hmm. You pick it up, and there's an ad clearly advertising something for the children. The ad aimed at a woman, but I would say, hey. You know, and, and rip it out and share it with my wife or mm -hmm. or memorize whatever it was. Hey, we should go get this. And, and you're right. It usually was about toys or places to go more so than clothing. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, there's actually lower numbers for both those categories. And something else that we found interesting, that when it came to buying kids' books as opposed to toys or clothes, that the numbers were also very low. The only area... Really? Where, yeah, which uh, was the only area where dads were more involved in buying uh, gifts or uh, presents or, or gifts or products for kids, rather, is when it came to kids' apps, which wasn't terribly surprising because dads tend to be overall more involved with technology purchases in the home. So the two kind of related to each other. So do we, do we uh, can you also break it down to the gender of the child? In other words, would a dad get, here's the app for Johnny. Mm -hmm. And Susie, uh, I'll let you take care of Susie. <laughs> yeah, good question. I mean, do we do, do? Does it break down that way as well? We actually have not broken down the research that way. Although it's an interesting step to take moving forward, definitely. When a, a business then markets to dads and moms, you brought up mom mom blogs, but you said dads were more into technology. Would you do an, a different kind of advertising campaign? for the ads that appear on the computer and on those sites than, than advertising campaigns, say, on the television where moms technically watch more TV than dads? Well, I think there are, there are different ways to reach dads. One of the things that we do specifically, we have a program called the Digital Dads, which is perfect for the kids' technology, kids' apps. And these are dad bloggers, and we reach out to them uh, on their blogs, and the messaging might be a little bit different uh, in, in terms of letting them know what's available. But the key points are pretty much the same in terms of looking for the products that would be educational and entertaining for your children. Um, the uh, website that I, I have listed for this is childsplaypr.com. Is that right? That's us. And, and, and tell me what, what, what can we ha find at the site? Oh, did I just see a picture of Carol King? Say that again. I'm sorry. I, I, I see some pictures flash. I went to the website. I was oh, <laughs> flashing. I thought that was Carol King there. No, it's a it's a gentleman posing with a lady who sort of looks like Carol King. Uh, yes, unfortunately, we're not working with Carol King, although that would be fun. <laughs> um, but on, on the website, you'll find out about our, a variety of our services. As I mentioned, we specialize in connecting brands with moms, and we do that through public relations, social media, and word of mouth communications. So the site will tell you a little bit about that. Oh, okay, and I'm and I'm at the site right now. Well, it's very fun looking. So yeah, I, it, when, when you, you know when you talk about the dad's role in picking out the books, I can, see. Maybe am I an exception to the rule, or is it just because this is 2014? I remember being very 
Now, you're right yeah, about the clothing. I, I think my wife did all the clothing, but I, I was there for the books. I was there for the toys. Oh, always. I was there for the trips, you know. Yeah. But, but, but I, don't want, I don't want to make it seem like it was all me. It was both of us, really. Mm-hmm. I think you were something of an exception there. I really do. You were more involved in those decisions than a lot of other dads, even today. Really? And do you think that's the woman's choice, though, the mom's choice? Like, well, you go ahead, you take nah. care of the car and, and the lawn, and I'll take care of well, everything that's, else? Maybe that's it. I couldn't take care of the car. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good to know. Uh, I think it's a, it's a real mix. It's a real mix, actually. There are certainly families where mom wants to take control of the decision-making, and other families, and we've heard this often, where she really, really wishes that dad would be more involved in all the categories than he currently is. So how do they open up communication between the two of them to express this? <laughs> that's not something we've looked at in the oh, survey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also going to vary a lot from family to family. <laughs> well, it is interesting. Yeah, I'm, 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 I feel like maybe we need to do something about this and... and uh I don't know what you do. I mean, it, it may, I don't know. Cult, culture is such a weird thing, isn't it? How how we become what we are. I, I think, you know, I found an, a, 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 um, a poem that my dad wrote to his mom in 1939 for Mother's Day. My, my dad's been gone about five years now. But I found this poem. Never knew, because when my mom died, we've been going through the old stuff. And we, what I'm getting at is that his handwriting looked exactly like mine. Now, my dad didn't teach me how to write cursive. I learned it in school. Mm-hmm. But yet, handwriting. So, so there's something genetic that gets passed on that's unexplainable. And, may, and maybe that's true for child rearing as well. I don't know. That, I, I think that's something that's undeniable. Um, I think there's that whole question of nurture versus nature that's never going to change. Um, so that, that's yet to be decided. Hmm. Have you learned more from the way social media itself is advertised and who the participants are than, say, mailing out surveys in the mail? Well, we do get a lot more feedback in social media. Um, that's the whole nature of, of course, how that works. Um, so we get a lot of feedback in terms of people's opinions on various products and on the marketing of those products. It, it kind of reminds me there was a lot of pushback among uh, dads uh, in terms of some of the advertising that has been done in the past and recent past that has kind of pictured them as, as buffoons in some areas. Areas. Yeah. You know, dad, change, dad change a typer, not possible. Um, I hate that. So, yeah, I do too. Um, and so because dads are more and more active in social media, they had a channel for conveying their discontent with that kind of portrait of their capability. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, feedback both ways. And my comment on that is that's absolutely true. I mean, whether it's Homer Simpson or... Archie Bunker or anybody, the, there has always, they're not always, but there has been a trend in, in the last few decades, I guess, mm-hmm. to make the dad the, the, the dummy. Yeah, uh, but, exactly. But in fairness to you women, early on in TV, look at Lucy. Lucy was always, Lucy and Lucille Ball, mm-hmm. she was always made out to be the buffoon, right? Ricky was the smart one, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? And that's just yeah. one example. So I think we've, we've done both ways. We've, it, we've, is demon, demonize a good word here? Whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we've made the villain out of each of and it doesn't make sense to do it to either one. That's true enough. That's true enough. Yeah. And it's more, there's more sensitivity now because of the feedback that people in marketing, people in advertising have been getting from the dads themselves. So the people are starting to think twice before they present that kind of portrayal. And when you did the surveys, were the dads more apt to return the survey as opposed to the woman? Uh, they were equally likely to return the survey, but what was really interesting is that Dad's perception of how active they were in the household purchasing decisions was often very different from Mom's. Dad would often say they were much more involved in a particular category, and then we would ask their partner the same question, and she would say, uh-uh, <laughs> that he's really not anywhere near as involved as he thinks he is. Oh, so you're talking no, about, really. about furniture, too, and, and paint for the walls and things like that? Yeah, we talked about uh, a whole lot of different categories, and, and something else that was interesting um, and a little depressing in a way was that the dads were uh, most responsible for de- the decision-making in what was considered traditionally male categories. 
So home repair, lawn and garden, automobiles, technology, uh, they were more likely to have the prime decision making there than in any of the more, let's call it family focused or kid focused areas. Well, I say this every Christmas. There would be no Christmas if it wasn't for women. We wouldn't put it. There would be not a decoration up. (laughs) Totally agree with you on that. Not that we don't. Not that us guys don't like it. We love it. It's just that if it was just if it was just a whole planet of guys. Mm -hmm. Did you get your tree? What tree? (laughs) You know, or whatever. There'd be no decorations. There'd be nothing. Right. So you women make it a more colorful place for us. I I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. But what were the um, ages that you sent the survey out to? Were they new parents or were they like seasoned parents, where their children seasoned. might be almost <laughs> growing? <laughs> It, it was a combination. We really wanted to get a range of responses from all different types of folks across the country. Mm. Uh, so zero to tween, I would say. Oh, well, wow. Well, again, this is just another example of a group of people trying to do some good things so that everything's kind of balanced and fair and maybe pointing out some short shortcomings of us, us guys. And uh, maybe my generation is the one that needed to learn and it's too late now. And, and now the newer dads are maybe going to be better. I don't know. Um, Stephanie Azaron, I'm looking at your tweets on, on the website. Uh, childsplaypr.com is the website. Anything else we need the listeners to know? I just want to thank you all for talking with us today. Well, thank you. I, I think it's a wonderful thing you're doing, actually. And uh, when's the last time you went to the Bronx Zoo? <laughs> last summer. <laughs> last summer. <laughs> all right. Well, there's so many new and exciting things happening. Yeah. Oh, yes, Out definitely, there. definitely. Yeah. All right, Stephanie, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Stay warm. Thank you. You too. All right. We'll take, <laughs> a, little, we'll take a break and be right back. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. Hi, this is Brad. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a pilot's license. This will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11. 